Hello, this is Ms. DB. In this video, we're going to talk about another way to solve systems of equations, and we're going to be using something called addition. This is also called elimination. You may have learned it before called elimination. So it's using algebra again, and again, it's a system of equations, linear equations, so we'll have two variables, usually x and y, and two equations, and we are going to solve by adding the equations together. So in order to use this method, we have to have them set up for elimination. Let's look at this example to see what I mean. In this example, it says x minus 2y equals negative 19, and 5x plus 2y equals 1. By set up for elimination, I am looking at one of the terms has a minus 2y, and one of the terms has a plus 2y. If it's set up like this, then all you have to do is add the equations together and one of the variables will eliminate, which is why it's often called elimination. So step one is to write them so that the variables are all lined up. So that's what they did right here. In step two, we just add those two equations together. You can add equations together just like you can add numbers together. We have 1x plus 5x is equal to 6x and then negative 2y plus 2y equals 0. Not 0y, not 1y, not y, just 0. And negative 19 plus 1 equals negative 18. So that simplifies to 6x equals negative 18. And then we just divide both sides by 6 and we get our first variable answer which is negative 3. Our next step then is to take that answer and plug it back into one of the original equations and solve for the other variable. So in this case, we would put x equals negative 3 back into whichever equation you think looks easier, and then solve for y. That's the same as the step we did in, when we were solving with substitution. This time, sometimes it's a little more work to find that second variable, because we don't have x equals or y equals to plug back into. Once you get your other variable, then you write it as an ordered pair, and then they don't have step five on here, but they should. That is to check your answers. You can check by right here, plugging them back into both of the original equations and making sure you get a true statement. Or you can check by graphing and seeing that the two lines will cross at the point that you found is the solution. All right, so on the worksheet, your first four problems, you don't have to solve these, you just have to say, whether or not you could solve these by elimination, by addition, as they are written. So you're either going to say, yes, I could go ahead and add these together and one of the variables would eliminate, or you'd say, no, you could not solve them by adding them together. So remember, in order to use elimination using addition, you have to have both variables have to have the same number in front, so like 2y and 2y, one has to be a plus, one has to be a minus. I don't want to do one through four because they're not that, won't take you that long, but let's look at another example where, where it would not be set up for elimination. Let's say I had 3x plus y equals 7 and x minus 2y equals 5. This is not set up for elimination with addition because my x term, one has a 3 and one would just have a 1, my y term has a 1 and the other one has a negative 2. So neither of them have the same number in front. Even if I had 3x and 3x, these are not yet set up for elimination either. They're very close though, and later on in this worksheet we'll look at what to do if that's the case. But for right now I would have to say no, this is not yet set up for elimination using addition. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and solve some problems using addition. You can look back as much as you need in the example to see what the steps are to follow. We will do one of these together. Let's do number six. So we have x plus 3y equals 14, 2x minus 3y equals negative 8. So it is set up for elimination by addition because we have both of the y terms are 3 and one's a plus and one's a minus. So our first step is to line them up with the variables on top of each other, and that, that part's already done. We already have our x's first, then our y's, equals, and then our constants. So I'm going to go ahead and add these equations together. I'm going to put a 1 in front of this x, so I don't forget that that is a 1x 
plus 2x. 1x plus 2x is 3x. Now we have plus 3y minus 3y. That's 0. 3y minus 3y is 0. I don't have to write anything. 14 plus negative 8, or 14 minus 8, is 6. So look at how simple of an equation we end up with to find x. 3x equals 6. We can really quickly divide by 3 and get our answer for our x. Now remember that x equals 2 is only part of our solution. We have to find out what y is as well. So we do that by taking our answer for x and plugging it back into either one of the equations. To me, it looks like the top one is a little bit easier because it's x instead of 2x. So I'm, and it doesn't have as many negatives either. So I'm going to write the first equation and then I'm going to take the x equals 2 and replace x with 2. And the next step is to solve for y. So there's the y right here. It's 3 times y plus 2, so I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides to undo that plus 2. That leaves me with 3y equals 12, divide by 3, and we get y equals 4. Then write that as an ordered pair, and then check. So again, when you check, you're just plugging those numbers back into your original equation. So our first equation was x plus 3y equals 14. Let's see if we get 14 on both sides. That would be 2 plus 3 times 4. Does that equal 14? That would be 2 plus 12. 2 plus 12 is 14. So we do get 14 equals 14. That's a true sentence. Then in our second equation, we are going to plug in again x equals 2 and y equals 4. And we want to see if this equals negative 8. So 2 times 2 is 4, minus 3 times 4 is 12. 4 minus 12 is negative 8, so we do get a true statement again, so I know that this indeed is the true, the correct solution to this system. If you check your work, you will always be able to get these problems correct, because if you had a mistake, if you got a non-true statement, then you could go back and find where your error was. All right, in this next section, like I talked about, these are almost set up for elimination by addition. They have the same coefficients in front of the same variables, but instead of having one positive and one negative, they'll both be positive or both be negative. All we need to do is to multiply each term in one of the equations by negative one. Either equation can be multiplied by negative one. But don't forget that you have to multiply every term by negative one. So here we have an example, x plus y equals 12, 2x plus y equals 6. We have a plus 1y and a plus 1y. If just one of them was a negative, we could use this process. So I decided to multiply everything in the second equation by a negative 1, which turns it into this. So now I have this system. This, the first equation is exactly the same, x plus y equals 12. But now the second equation is negative 2x, minus y equals negative 6. So now we have a plus y and a minus y, or you could say plus 1y minus 1y. Now we can go ahead and add these together. x minus 2x, that's the same as 1x minus 2x is negative 1x. The y's cancel. Plus y minus y is 0. I don't have to write anything for that. And 12 minus 6 is 6. Now if you have negative 1x equals 6, that's not your answer. We need to solve for x, so x would equal a negative 6. Then we have to solve for the other variable, so you go back with your answer for your first variable, plug it into either of the equations. I plugged it into the first one, but you could have used the second one, and that would be negative 6 plus y equals 12. Undo the minus 6 by adding 6 to both sides, and we get our other variable. Write it as an ordered pair, and then check your answer. And you're going to do that for 8, 9, and 10. Let's look at number, let's look at number 10. We have 5x plus 7y equals negative 31. 5x minus 9y equals 17. So we see we have a 5x and a 5x if only one of them was a plus and one was a minus. Right now they're both positive. If there's no sign in front, they're positive. 
So I decided, I'm going to decide, to multiply everything in the second equation by a negative 1, which then becomes negative 5x plus 9y equals negative 17. Multiplying by a negative 1 will change the sign of every term in your equation. The first equation didn't change. 5x plus 7y equals negative 31. I don't multiply them both, just one. So now I have this system of equations, and I'm going to use this to do elimination by addition. I'm going to add these two equations together. 5x minus 5x is 0. It's eliminated. 7y plus 9y is 16y. Negative 31 minus 17. So they're both negative. So you're going, you can use your calculator if you want to, but you want to make sure that you see that they're both negative, so you actually add them and then the sign will be negative. So it would be negative 48. Then we multiply or divide both sides by 16 to undo the multiplication, and that is negative 3. Again, you can check it with your calculator. So we have the value for y. Now we're going to take that and find what x is. I think I'll use the second equation this time to find x. So 5x minus 9y equals 17, but I know that y equals 3. So I replace the y with a negative 3. It's equal to negative 3. And then I solve this equation for x. So 5x minus 9 times negative 3 would be a plus 27 equals 17. Undo the plus 27 by subtracting 27 from both sides, and you get 5x equals negative 10. And then you finish solving and you find out what x is equal to, and then you write it as an ordered pair, and then you check your work. So all of these problems, you will get integer answers. That's not always true. It's certainly possible to get a decimal or a fraction answer when you do these problems. But in this worksheet, on this worksheet, in this assignment, you will get integer answers. So if you end up with something crazy like 7.359, you made a mistake, and you should check it again. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful day.